All right, so here we are again uh, with the Small Business Chronicles to talk a little bit more about starting a business. Uh, anyway, if you would, please don't remember, please remember to go ahead and subscribe and make comments. Let me know the kind of questions you'd like answered, things you'd like to discuss. Put those in the comments below and make sure you subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications also. Anyway, here we go. These are the top four things why small businesses fail. I'll tell you some of my experiences and what you can maybe take away from it. So coming in fourth is not having a marketing plan. All right. Now, just for me, I made that big mistake, too, because I had that almost field of dreams kind of idea, right, with the movie, build it and they will come. Because, you know, I was heavily involved in the board game community here in Vegas. Um, I did a lot of board game conventions all over and stuff. And I thought, wow, if I just put it up, it'll be the first one in the entire state. They'll just come in in droves. Yeah, that was a mistake. And another thing, I am not a social media person personally. I don't do Facebook, don't do Twitter, don't do Instagram, don't do any of the social media outlets. And I didn't have a marketing plan for those really either because I just didn't know them. So I was seriously negligent in the marketing plan because if you are good at social media, that is a tremendous resource for potential marketing. Uh, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, anything out there, use it. It's good. However, there are still plenty of other options. I don't know about TV these days, right? Because a lot of people don't even have network TV. I don't even see commercials other than personal injury lawyers for commercials anyway. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Other than that, that's it. Newspapers, there really aren't ads. Mail, the flyers, they've diminished. Yellow pages. So a lot of the old standard types of advertising no longer exist. It really is all about the internet, um, on your phone, things like that. But you really need to have a detailed and proper marketing plan. Because there have been cafes that have opened. Uh, I've heard about people who, they did pop-ups, right? Different restaurants, different bars, different things. They would have like a pop-up night. They would bring their game, host it, get a thing, get a mailing list, grab a community, and all that. But still, what you have to remember, folks, because again, like I was involved in the community here in Vegas. Just because you have this dedicated community who comes and all that kind of stuff, doesn't necessarily mean they'll translate into... Uh, patronizing your business and also uh, forking out the money you may need to sustain. Um, in a city like Vegas, it's very transient also. So we're always getting people coming, always getting people leaving. So, you know, I'll get customers, solid, good, you know, dedicated customers for six months in there two, three, four times a week. And then boom, they move to another state, get transferred or whatever. That just happens all the time. So you can't really rely on what you think you have you must dedicate a good amount of your money into advertising and make sure it's sustainable to keep going. All right, next, this kind of segues into uh, with the marketing, and that is a proper business plan. Now, this is opening a business 101, right? You need a business plan. Everybody should have one, but a lot of people don't, and I and I wonder why. Especially in this day and age, right, with the internet. Because what I did, there's so many plans out there. I paid, I don't know whether it was $9.99 a month, $19.99 a month, $20, whatever it was, but there was a marketing plan that was like a plug and play. You know, I would put in numbers, put in this, it would give me projections, forecasts. I could do six months, year, five year, all these kind of things that have different, all this stuff. There are so many resources out there. There is really no excuse for you not to have a business plan. And of course, just like we talked about, make sure you got marketing in there. However, here's the thing that you, that is 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 sort of cliche or sort of like, you know, right out there, but you don't think about it. Nobody makes a business plan to fail. Right? Nobody writes a business plan that, eh, yeah, I'm not going to succeed. I'll go under in a two-year plan. Every single business plan that people write is written for success. 
But does every business succeed? No. So that should just tell you right there, just it's a dose, it's a clear dose of reality, right? That just because you have a really good business plan, just because you have all those numbers, just because you think you've thought of everything, doesn't necessarily mean it will translate into success. However, it is a vital part of the process. You have to have a business plan. Now, I didn't need any funding from banks or anybody else. I was funding myself. We'll get into that in just a second. Um, but if you do, you're going to need to present that to a bank. You're going to need to present that maybe to your investors. If you're going to have your family, friends, or whatever, whatever it is, they want to see a plan. They want to see how they're going to maybe recoup their investment, get their money back. But it has to be realistic, right? And again, like I talked about in other videos, those conversations you're going to have in that mirror with yourself, be honest about it. All right? Be honest about it. Because again, business plans are written with success in mind, but it doesn't guarantee the success. All right, so remember, good budget and marketing into the business plan, and you need to move that money into the business plan. All right, so number two, and this is something again, with the conversations, improper management. All right, now especially in the board game community, it's a relatively new concept. So when I opened, of course, I had no experience with a board game cafe. I had no experience even going to a board game cafe. I had never seen one in person. But I'm like, yeah, you know what? I can do it. I like games. I can throw some games up on the shelf, serve some coffee, whatever. Yeah, no big deal. It is a big deal. <laughs> All right. It really is. So again, when you talk about improper management and end those conversations with yourself, if you don't have the expertise in a certain aspect of your business, like we talked about, whether it's food and whether it's the food, just say food, right? A cafe or whatever, find somebody, get somebody with that knowledge. Maybe it's you. Uh, somebody wrote in the comments that that was their passion. Whether you're a chef or not, whether you've worked in restaurants, managed restaurants, uh, worked in the kitchen, or whatever, if you have that experience, that's great. That will be your expertise. If you're a bartender, worked in a bar, managed a bar, owned a bar, whatever it is, you have that expertise. I pretty much played games. I had a karate school maybe 30 years ago for, for a couple of years. That was the only brick and mortar business I had. So I did not have knowledge or experience even opening a brick and mortar business. And again, with the business plan, moving into this step like we're talking about now, proper management, man, if you have never opened a brick and mortar business, wow, there is so much you're going to learn. And again, I've heard this people say, oh, well, I've had an eBay business, I've had this, yeah. If you're working out of your house and you have a business, you're, you're probably very successful. Hey, congratulations, that's great. There's a big difference from having a brick and mortar, being a landlord. I had a 60 page lease. I had to hire a lawyer. How am I gonna decipher a contract with 60 pages? All right? So you need to make sure that with those conversations, you know what you're doing. Be realistic. Again, I was extremely unrealistic. I thought I could do it. We all thought we could do it. How hard is it to throw games up on a shelf? People will come and play. And then opening the cafe. Again, I did the same thing. How hard could that be? You know, I'll just uh, get a slicer, slice some meat, some cheese, some bread, make sandwiches, get a refrigerator. I had to figure all that out also. And yeah, it it wasn't the best way. I Believe me, like, I, like I'm totally honest with you folks and let you know, I learned a lot of mistakes. I did a lot of mistakes. Um, if I were to go back and rewind, boy, I would start off from day one. I'd be zooming because I know not to do those same things. And we have grown into what we are now. And again, I want to speak about that, about growing into um, the same thing with where we are with proper management. 
Remember, when you walk into places, whether it's Meepleville, another cafe, any other business, you may see this kind of well-oiled machine, how, you know, wow, they did that, they thought of that, they thought of that. A lot of that comes with trial and error to get where they are, you know what I mean? Because we've made it, We're, we are in our fifth year now, and of course, the pandemic, but other than that, but there was a lot of trial, a lot of trial and error, a lot of work. And let me tell you folks, even when the proper management, right, you think you're gonna have staff and all that kind of stuff, that's a whole nother issue. We'll get into that into another video. But I'll tell you just a soul crushing story that I had. I When I first opened, I opened at 10 o'clock in the morning, closed at one o'clock in the morning. Cause I was like, I'm gonna maximize the time. I'm gonna be open for, cause this is Vegas. So we're a 24 hour city. So I'm gonna be open for people in the morning, be open for people late at night, playing games all day. How hard could that be? I just gotta sit there in the you know, business and let people come in. I could play games if it gets you know slow. I could read rules, do whatever, clean. You know, ah, no big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. <laughs> Again, you may overestimate your own abilities and your own qualifications. So here's uh, the horror story that I had. Like I said, I opened at 10 o'clock, closed at 1. I literally had a day where I opened those doors at 10 o'clock in the morning, closed at 1 o'clock in the morning, did not have one person walk through the door, nor one phone call. Talk about soul crushing. So again, yeah. Why did that happen? Why did I allow that to happen? How did it happen? Remember I went back? Let's go back to the fourth thing I said. The first thing I said, but number four, marketing. How, how could I own a business and not one person walk through those doors? That's right here, all on these shoulders. That's all on me. That's my fault. So don't make those mistakes, all right? But just realize the potential for like I said, soul crushing days, moments are going to happen like that. Because those are days you just wanna throw in the hat. You're like, man, this is just isn't gonna work. But you just gotta keep plugging along. You gotta stay true and uh, strong, right? Because those things are gonna happen. But again, uh, I'm gonna relate stories. Also, so let's take a quick break. Make sure in the comments below, ask questions, bring up points. I will discuss them, I will talk about them, I will give you my insights, maybe I can share a story like this, but that'll just help you grow, help us grow um, to make this a success, right? Make your dream come into a success. So we talked about marketing, making sure you have proper marketing before you go into your business plan, but that is sort of swallowed up into the business plan. Then number two, most important is proper management whatever kind of revenue streams, even retail, right? I'll go back to retail. I hate sales. I don't like selling people. Who likes going to buy a car, right? Isn't that a cliche? Oh, he's like a used car salesman because just that, you know, that, how they treat you and how they're just trying to get the buck. I don't like doing that, you know what I mean? So I didn't know anything about retail. I didn't know anything about inventory. I did not know a lot, even to this day, right? If you figure Snakes and Lattes opened in 2010, this is 2020, so this whole concept is still a relatively new idea. A lot of people haven't been this. So with the marketing, there's not gonna be a lot of people know. You're gonna have to really sell them on this idea, let them know, make sure that's in the business plan, but also the proper management. How many people are you gonna have, whether it's staff or even yourself, who have that experience in a board game cafe, working in a board game cafe, the experience with it. Just because you've been to three or four, you've seen them, yeah, that's that's not enough. I didn't even have that. I mean, I went to a couple, but you know what I mean? So still, proper management. Make sure somebody knows inventory, somebody knows food and beverage, somebody knows retail, somebody knows these things, all right? So proper management. And again, we can discuss a lot of things um, more in detail. Now, of course, uh, we are now at the number one reason why a lot of small businesses fail. The reason uh, that I don't want you to fail, you need to think about, what is that proper financing, right? Everybody knows that. Most businesses, small businesses fail because they are seriously underfunded. Now, people, I cannot give you numbers, 
The reason I can't give you numbers, if for example, I, I interviewed Greg May and I called him the board game cafe king of New York City because he owns the Uncommons and he, uh, he's the co-founder and owner of, of the Uncommons. He also owns, uh, co he's co-owner and co-founder of Hexen Company, which are, they have two, I think they're opening a third one in the city. Um, but he was talking about when one of theirs they opened, they needed like a half a million dollars or something. But that's New York City. So there's a difference between New York City or if you're living in, say, a little suburb outside of, I don't know, Boise, Idaho or something. I, I mean, just a little town in, you know, middle America, right? There's a big difference. What you may need here is not even close to what you made here or vice versa. So I can't give exact numbers. But I was very fortunate, like I said, because I, you know, I've saved and, you know, done things in my life, been successful, whatever. So I had, I had financing myself. I didn't have to go to a bank. I didn't have to get from relatives. I didn't have to do any of that stuff. But the kind of person I am and what I did, the one thing I can maybe give you um, as far as something concrete, as far as financing, is to work on an 18-month plan. And what I mean by that is, is what I did is I knew all this. I knew that small businesses fail within the first year and a half, first two years of business, all right? That's just what they do because they're seriously underfunded. So what I did is I figured out a monetary figure, whether it's my rent, because uh, remember there's CAM also, in case you don't know about that for a lot of things. CAM is common area maintenance. That pays for the light, the parking lot, the security, the garbage, the water, stuff like that. So there's all these like things in your business plan. You're gonna be like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Like I told you, brick and mortar is a different thing. However, um, I worked on an 18 month plan. And what I did is I figured out, okay, what is my lease? What is my CAM? What is my electric, blah, blah, blah. And I came up with a figure. And what I did is I took that figure times 18 and put that in the bank. Because I knew every night going to sleep, every night walking into Meepleville, that I would be around for 18 months. Now, you don't need like the full rent, the full bills, right? Because you are going to make money. But you may have those days <laughs> where nobody comes in. Not one penny is put into the till, right? Nothing is earned. So it's going to be, um, you just got to follow that, okay? So you got to make sure. So anyway, that was my plan. And, and I think personally, because I did it, that that is a way to sort of guarantee at least getting over the hurdle. If you know you are set to operate for 18 months, because worst case scenario, say business is just horrible, it's slow, you can maybe not have anybody work and you can be there all yourself. Again, it depends on whether you have a bar, whether you have a kitchen, whether you have all this kind of stuff, you gotta, you know, you gotta do all that kind of stuff. I didn't have all that. So yes, I could just be there myself, but again, working 80, 100 hours a week at first. Of course you are, you're all gung-ho, I can do it, I'm strong. Yeah, that gets old really fast, let me tell you. Really fast, all right? Regardless of how you've had those conversations, and I know myself, I know I could do it, I did do it, I had to do it, but it sucks, <laughs> all right? It's something I didn't wanna do, I didn't have to do, but there were times I had to do it. So, but I knew, again, going to sleep, going into business, that whatever happens, whether I have a great month or I have a bad month, I knew that I had sustenance, I had money, I had it there available to at least get me through 18 months. And then, you know, little by little, it's, it builds up, you uh, get a little nest egg or whatever, or whatever, and then you go to maybe uh, 24 months, right? Because it adds on, you just, so it kind of keeps rolling and rolling and rolling forward in essence, because you know, those 18 months are rolling and moving, okay? Um, that, what I mean like month to month to month as you catch up. But again, for mental health, I thought it was very good to have that in there because I just knew that, yeah, regardless of what happens, I'm gonna make it through. Bills will get paid, the doors will stay open. If I'm the only one here, if I have to cut hours, do whatever, something, some sort of Meepleville will be around at least for that amount of time. Because again, folks, 
There is just all of these things, whether it's the marketing, the business plan, the management, the financing, just whatever. You all, you sort of need to have a confluence of a lot of really good things for a, this to become successful, right? Of course, you know, a hard work, money, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you need all that, but a lot of things do need to come together to make this happen, okay? So, money, of course, is really, really key, but some people I've heard, oh, you know, we have four months, we have six months. I just don't think that's enough, and I think that's why these businesses go out of business. Because again, you need your customers. We all are, as human beings, right? Aren't we creatures of habit? But if they want to, if you want them to keep coming back to your place or knowing that, they're gonna have to know it's still there. They're gonna have to know it's stability. They're gonna, you're gonna have to build some trust up with them. So right now, I'm in my fifth year, I've got people who've been coming back for five years, or if they just started two years ago, they're still coming, whatever. But you need to maintain that consistency, and, that, and it takes time to really develop the relationship, the rapport with your customers, with the community, know you're there, whether they see you on advertising, remember the marketing, all that kind of stuff. You need to be seen constantly all the way around, so you need to have that time. Okay, so again, uh, in the comments below, ask questions, make comments, let me know, we'll get to them, we'll talk about them. But to go ahead and sum up this video right here, the four things that are probably top on the list of why you might fail and to not fail, proper marketing, business plan, proper management, and financing. And again, remember, if you like these videos, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell for more notifications, and we'll be coming to you soon with some more Small Business Chronicles. Thanks for watching.